distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special congregation in honor of His Royal Majesty, Otufo Osei II, the Asante Holy. His Royal Majesty will be conferred with an honorary Doctor of Law's degree for distinguishing himself as a guardian of heritage and culture and traditional leader. My name is Amnesty Government Council. Vice Chancellor, has Vice Chancellors, Vice Chancellors of Sister Universities, the Honorable Central Regional Minister, uh, Minister, Supervising Minister of Education, Osabarima, Dr. Pesiata, the second of my name, of Ubacha, Members of the University Council, Minister of State, Members of the Judiciary, Members of the the Pro Vice Chancellor, Pentios Vocation, the Special Congregation convened to confer an honorary doctorate degree upon His Royal Majesty, Utu for Century to the Second. This event holds great significance, not just for our university, but for the university, for the nation, and Africa, the African continent as a whole. As this Chancellor of this esteemed university, and people are aware of the responsibilities this ceremony carries. Today we honor one of Africa's most revered traditional leaders, a man whose influence transcends borders and generations, His Royal Majesty, Osei Tutu II. Osei Tutu II, the second of the disputes that played the Asante state. His bold initiatives brought stability to areas once marked by division and conflict. His leadership in these matters is a testament to his deep commitment and understanding of the traditional governance and his dedication to the welfare of his people. One of the most remarkable examples of his leadership is the pivotal role he played in restoring peace in the Dagon traditional area. As chairman, <laughs> As chairman of the committee of MNGs, His Majesty facilitated the negotiations between the Andani and the Abudu royal families, culminating in a historic peace agreement in 2019. Beyond his contribution to peace and justice, Osei Chutu the second Tunfo has been an unwavering advocate for education and economic development. Recognizing the transformative power of education, he established the Tool for Education Fund shortly after his institute. This fund, I'm happy to say, has provided scholarships and bursaries to over 300,000 students. Remotely. Enabling countless young Ghanaians from all regions from all tribes to access quality education and contribute to the intellectual and economic growth of our nation. Yeah. His commitment for a vision to, for economic development is equally commendable. In 2019, he unveiled a 10-point development plan for Kumasi, aimed at industrializing the local economy creating jobs, and fostering wealth within the region. This plan serves, I'm pleased to say, as a model for sustainable development across the country. Our honor is a state span of global reach. His influence extends far beyond the borders of this country. His timely interventions in matters of national and international importance have had the most significant impact. If I may share with you, in 2016, the former president, President John Adekun, before, highlighted how His Majesty's advocacy at the IMF was instrumental in sustaining Ghana's economy. <laughs> Yeah. 
such actions highlight his stature as a global statesman whose counsel is sought and on the world stage. Today, as we prepare to confer an honorary doctorate degree upon His Royal Majesty, we do so in recognition of his extraordinary service to the nation and his unwavering commitment to promoting unity, justice, and development in Asantima and beyond. And it is my immense pleasure and privilege for the University of Cape Coast, the top ranked university in Ghana and West Africa. <laughs>
So, the establishment of one institution may not count very much in the scheme of national development. But I would suggest that one of the many visionary acts of our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, was a decision to establish a university focused on education with the task of producing the quality manpower needed for the education of the people of Ghana. So, and there could not be a better place to have the honor of hosting such a university than the city of Cape Town. So, your city is where the light of higher education in this nation was fixed. Inspiring a test for knowledge and drawing thousands from every corner of the land to drink from his fountain of knowledge. So, we owe it to the churches of, 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 for their initiative in establishing and laying the foundations of secondary education on a grand scale. So, from Infantipim and Wesley Girls School to Abisado College, Holy Child and St. Augustine's, the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church, and the Anglican Church led the way in providing the best in education and in conditions of gender equality long before the value of inclusivity gained universal acceptance. So, this university, on whom we have to depend for the training of our teacher stands as, as a crowning jewel of the city of enlightenment, from whose commanding hills and sandy beaches millions of the best brains in our land have been molded, have grown, have grown the best talents who have kept the administration of our nation. So, this university began life in 1962 at the University College of Education in a special relationship with the University of Ghana, Lincoln. The prime mandate of producing graduate teachers to meet the manpower needs of the Ghana Education Service. So, it seems unbelievable today to recall that his total enrollment as at that time was 155 students split between two departments, the Department of Science and the Arts. And the whole concept was deemed controversial in some circles. However, it survived the political upheavals of the period and in 1971 it attained the status of a fully fledged university with the right to grant its own degrees. So, the mandate of the university was expanded beyond the needs of education and today it is a valued community of about 75,000 students from all disciplines. So, the founding fathers and their pioneering administrators have every reason to be proud of what they have bequeathed to the nation. And long may we continue to herald the achievements of this university. But even as we exalt these achievements, and honor those whose hard work has made it possible, we cannot but pause and reflect on the fates and fortunes of the single subject for which this university was created, and I speak of education. So, it remains quite problematic to me that 60 years down the line, we are still grappling with the same challenges that informed the decision to establish this university in the first place. So, some historical background may be appropriate here. Although the Gold Coast carried the type of a model colony, less than 10% of our population had been to school by 1951, when the people were allowed to elect the first nationalist government led by Dr. Carmen Kumar under the limited self-rule mandate. So, the government took the view that education was the key to the development of the country, and consequently, Long has created education program to accelerate the pace and level of education. So, additionally, a program of adult education was learned to drive them to mass literacy. In 1951, total enrollment in Brandon. <laughs>
your royal majesty, today you have become an alumnus of not just any university, but the number one university in Ghana, the number one in West Africa, and the number seven in the whole of Africa. You have every right to pride yourself in this. I know our friends from KU and KU and others will not be happy, but this is what it is. This is the general one. Your Royal Majesty, you have also become an alumnus in a very good time because next month the Alumni, the alumni Association is planning to launch the UCC Alumni Scholarship Scheme for Student Support. Initially, our target was 2 million cities, but today we have changed our mind. Our new target is 3 million cities. The Royal Majesty, that goes to say that the extra 1 million is solely yours. If we have a chance to be here, we can write it and we can't reach here. We'll talk about that. Please, let's take the alumni to the Royal Majesty. So when I say I, you mention your name, then I will take it from there. So I do solemnly pledge to fulfill my duties as an alumni of the University of Cape Coast. As an alumni of the University of Cape Coast, I pledge to use my knowledge, to use my knowledge, skills and experiences. To the best of my ability, best of my ability. For, the of for the advancement of learning and for the well-being well of my community and country. My community and country. I promise to be a loyal ambassador, promise to be a loyal ambassador for, my university. for my university to promote their welfare, to promote their welfare. and maintain their, reputation. maintain their reputation. I will endeavor in all my dealings to be known as a person of honor, known as a person of honor and repute, to bring respect to my alma mater. So help me God. So help me God. God.